For many animals living out in the wilderness, life can be very challenging. You not only have to deal with harsh climates, but also competitors and predators. This is why it's important for many species to gain the upper hand, because if you are unable to compete in a competitive ecosystem, you will almost certainly perish. This is why you can find many different creatures with strange adaptations, and although they may look unusual to us, they help the animal to survive and outcompete competition. There are plenty of examples of strange adaptations across the animal world, and in today's video I will be focusing on just a few, as I'll be going through three animals with unusual adaptations that help them survive. And for our first species, we can head to both the Americas and Southeast Asia, as we have the tapirs. Now tapirs are arguably one of the most mysterious large mammals on this planet, both because of their looks, and also because they can be very hard to find in the wild. Despite their size, they can go unseen if wanted, and of course this comes in very handy when avoiding predators. Now there are four species of tapir still alive today, these being the mountain tapir, the South American tapir, Baird's tapir, and the Malayan tapir. The Malayan tapir is the largest, and is also the most striking. Although the adults have a contrasting black and white coloration, their young are even more beautiful. They have a dappled black and white coloration, and this coloration eventually fades with age. These lines and dots act as perfect camouflage, because they can be very hard to spot amongst the undergrowth. Tapirs can look very similar to some of the mammals that went extinct thousands of years ago. It has an almost prehistoric appearance, and it's thought that today's tapirs have been around since the early Eocene. It's thought that they have changed very little over the past 20 million years, and they've seen many species come and go. Although many of the large megafauna, such as woolly mammoths, were not able to make it to the present day, at least we still have woolly tapirs. Although they're nowhere near the size of a woolly mammoth, they are still very large creatures, with the second largest tapir, the South American tapir, reaching a maximum weight of around 320 kilograms. This size gives them protection from some predators, but they do still fall prey to jaguars, and the Malayan tapir falls prey to tigers, and some sometimes dolls. To get to this size, they have a mostly herbivorous diet, and they're known for eating a lot of fruit berries and foliage. They can eat up to 34 kilograms of food a day, and to find this food they have to be constantly on the move. This diet also makes them extremely beneficial to their ecosystems, and they're often referred to as the gardeners of the forest, as they play an important role in dispersing seeds, and this of course boosts biodiversity. Tapirs can often look quite cute and unthreatening, but they really aren't to be messed with. They will fiercely defend themselves and their young, and tapirs have been known to maim and even kill people. There was one famous case in Costa Rica, where the Ministry of Environment and Energy was attacked by a mother tapir when he tried to get close to her baby. This just goes to show that these creatures aren't to be messed with, and you definitely shouldn't approach a mother with her young. But now we've gone over some interesting facts about the tapirs, it's time to address the elephant in the room, and also the elephant-like appendage on their face. Their snout may make you think that they're related to elephants, but instead their closest relatives are rhinos and horses. You could argue that they almost look like a mixture between the two, but behaviour-wise they are not similar to either of them. This snout comes in very handy in the wild, and actually has multiple uses. Of course it is great at picking up scents and helping them find food, but this strange appendage is also prehensile. It means that it can wrap around and grab things, and helps them to pluck fruit from trees, and also grab and tear leaves. Tapirs also spend a lot of time in and around water, and when they usually choose to take a plunge, they will walk on the bottom of the river or the lake, and they'll use their snouts almost like a snorkel. So this snout really does give them an edge over the competition, and even though it looks quite strange to us, it is a very useful adaptation. But for our next species, we can head to pretty much anywhere around the world, as we have the black-winged stillet. Now this species is a very strange looking wetland bird, and it's also in the same family as a few other famous wetland birds, such as the American avocet and the red-necked avocet. These birds are often found in marshes and coastal lagoons, and these areas are full of potential prey. One of the main reasons why so many birds thrive in wetlands is because there's simply so much food on offer. As well as fish, there's also insect larvae, and of course amphibians. These prey items are relatively easy to catch, but are often very hard to get to. Certain birds have different ways of getting across wetlands, as some simply swim, whereas others like to wade, and some move across vegetation. These different ways of traversing wetland ecosystems have led to some very strange adaptations such as flappy feet, webbed feet, and with the case of the black-winged stillet, extremely long legs. Their legs almost look like they belong to another bird, and are very spindly and pencil-like. These legs often make them very clumsy flyers, but they are very good at one thing. Their spindly legs create very little resistance through the water, and means that they're very good at wading through wetlands. The fact that they are so long means that they can wade through deeper water than other birds, and this means that they can access prey that other birds can't. Strangely, this bird has something in common with another unusual wetland bird, that being the African jacana. 
The African jacana doesn't have the longest of legs, but instead has very long toes. These toes help them walk across wetland vegetation, but in some cases they can almost look like mutants, as they appear to have multiple pairs of legs. As I've covered in a previous video, this is an illusion, as they like to protect their young by keeping them under their feathers. This trait is shared with the black wing stillet, and it can appear like they have multiple pairs of very long legs. So even though it may appear like they've stolen their legs from another bird, these legs are in fact very useful adaptations. But for our final species, we'll be heading to both eastern and southern Africa, as we have the bat-eared fox. Now this fox is found in the African savanna, and is the only extant species in its genus. Although it is fox by name, it doesn't really act like a fox. They are known for being wily and cunning like other foxes, but they do tend to have a very different diet. Like other medium to large sized mammals across Africa such as the aardwolf and the aardvark, this fox likes to feed on bugs. They will happily feed on ants, spiders and scorpions, and it's thought that one single fox can eat 1.15 million termites per year. As well as feeding on insects, they also sometimes prefer more pricey meal, as they're known to be fans of desert truffles. Because these foxes aren't the largest of creatures, they are targeted by many predators, but luckily for the most part they are able to avoid them. They spend most of their days tucked away in their dens, and then they come out at night to feed. Of course many large predators still hunt at night, but in most cases the bat-eared foxes are able to hear them coming. As you might be able to guess by the size of their ears, they have incredible hearing, but they don't just use this superpower to listen out for predators, but surprisingly they also use it to find their prey. Their hearing is so sensitive that they're able to hear insects underground, and they can even hear dung beetle larvae chewing their way out of a dung ball. As well as this, their ears aid in temperature control, because just like the African elephants, their ears can help them get rid of unwanted heat. Although they are sometimes accidentally poisoned by farmers, they are a farmer's friend as they get rid of pests. They play a vital role in controlling harvester termite populations, and these are considered pests by many farmers. If you are lucky enough to see this fox in the wild, you may notice that they are rarely alone. They usually live in groups of two to five, and this is normally made up of one male and multiple females. The females give birth to two to six young, and these young foxes are known as kits. As well as being found in large groups, they are also found in close proximity to each other, as up to 72 of these foxes have been recorded in one square mile. These foxes are definitely one of the more stranger canines, as they can appear almost cat-like. Even though they are very small for a fox, they are not the smallest foxes, because that title goes to the fennec foxes. But even though they're not the smallest, they are one of the most unique foxes in the world, and their giant ears have turned them into one of the most highly adapted insect predators. Of course there are many other creatures that could have made it on this list, so if you know of any let me know down in the comments below. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed, if you liked it please leave a like, and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these, but until next time, goodbye.